Uh, for those of you who don't know the European Investment Bank, uh, the European Investment Bank is a, it's a European institution that was um, uh, founded with the Treaty of Rome in 1958. Um, it's, it serves as the long-term uh, financing uh, branch of the EU. Uh, it was intended for uh, supporting the development of European infrastructure. Um, the EIB's areas of interest have gone beyond Europe through special uh, mandates. Um, which uh, give us uh, scope for action um, in, in countries of interest to the EU. Um, these, uh, these countries outside of the EU, probably about 10% of our lending is, is focused outside of the EU. The rest is inside the EU. Um, the, the EIB in 2009 is, has been, um, been very, very active because, of course, the financial crisis has hit um, uh, Europe as well as um, all the other developing countries. And um, the EIB was uh, asked to um, especially support Europe at this time when, when lending was dying, drying up. Um, uh, we were um, gave an unprecedented level of lending last year, 79 billion euro, um, and uh, in doing so, the bank has played, I think, a significant, a significant role in addressing uh, the credit uh, shortage in the market. Um, this also being said uh, is true for the renewable energy sector. Um, where uh, a significant reduction in, in lending was, uh, was, or financing was made available in 2000 and, uh, between 2008 and 2009, uh, where um, private equity and, uh, and venture capital also dried up. Um, and then, of course, the bank uh, was inundated with requests for financing for those projects that were already well advanced, but then the banks themselves were, were reluctant to be lending. Um, I think that we made a tremendous effort to speed up the process of, um, of our approvals and preparation, project preparation. Operation, um, in order to meet these, uh, to meet this uh, deadlines or uh, commitment, um, and the commit European Council that asked us to focus on three areas um, in this financing, and that's uh, SMEs, convergence regions, and uh, activities in climate change mitigation. Um, and maybe I won't go any further than that right now. We we have a lot of lending. I say we in the last uh, say the last uh, since 2006 to 2010, we've done uh, somewhere around uh, 10.7 billion euro in lending to renewables, but not including uh, um, intermediated loans like credit lines, which we also offer to a lot of European banks. There'll probably be another two and a half billion there. Also excludes things like uh, energy efficiency and um, and the CHP. So we, we have quite a very large portfolio. This year, probably, we're, last year we lent about 3.3 billion in, in renewables alone. Um, this year, I think we're up about 2.8 billion, so roughly that level. Thank you. Thank you. This looks quite interesting, the way in which... Just uh, in, and I think in response a little bit to this uh, question of what uh, what about outside of the Europe and the developing countries where a lot of energy is needed, we've been asked that a few times already recently, and why the EIB cannot do more um, in, in this area. And I think that um, our view at the moment is uh, we're of course we're focused in Europe. Um, Europe is, is is targeting itself through the National uh, Renewable Energy Action Plans. Um, already, I think uh, 21 countries have already submitted their plans, so that the uh, looking at the, the the largest countries, which make up 90% 90, 90 of the consumption in the EU, um, in electricity at least. What the plans show is that roughly uh, electricity growth will be zero, pretty much, maybe slightly declining. Um, yet at the same time, electricity, uh, renewable energy is going to jump from, say, uh, around 10% uh, to, to um, or 20%. So what that means is what you're going to be seeing is no, no re real increases, but there will be a reduction in, in CO2 emissions, and, and there will be a a rise in, in, in renewable energy generation. And our focus is, in, for, in fact, to support the development of renewable energy uh, markets and technologies, um, because currently these prices, the cost of a lot of these are just still too high. You, 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 you have uh, wind energy now that is probably already, uh, in many cases around the world, already competitive with uh, fossil fuels. And we're seeing that already happen in island states and uh, isolated locations where even the in intermittency is still worth it, even as a a direct replacement for fossil fuels.